All right. Well, thanks. Thank you. I'm glad to be here tonight with such a fabulous crowd. The writing and reading I've been doing uh, for some time now is uh, turned with an eye or ear or a mind and heart toward what might have led me to become a peacemaker or to think that I have become a peacemaker. So uh, it, it will maybe evolve into a series of essays, it may evolve into a memoir, it, it may evolve into dust and glitter. Anyway, <laughs> all right, I carry on. Okay, so this, so this kind of topical is how I'm trying to approach things. Um, this one um, is I pulled together some pieces and I'm titling this, We Shall Overcome. I do not know whether a white woman giving thanks to a young black man and an older black woman is a way to overcome. I do not know beforehand whether I have unintentionally offended or misspoken. I have heard first and second hand that some black people are tired of educating white people. Likewise, I have heard black persons recommend the first way to learn is to ask them. I just do not know whether or how woke I am. However, I do know enough to know just now that I should look up woke in Urban Dictionary. <laughs> Reading its several definitions, I have decided I would do better to delete my questionable references to self-wokeness in the next revision. <laughs> Nevertheless, I put my words together in the most loving way I can and send them on their way. Headed out the door from home to the February 2020 monthly meeting and program of the local branch of the North Carolina NAACP, I glanced over at the hat I had worn in January's <coughs> annual march celebrating the life of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. It still had the gimme pen on it that I put there from the march. We shall overcome. I impulsively grabbed my hat to take with me. It had launched a stream of questions, the most gripping of which was this. If we shall overcome, then what do I need to overcome? What do white people need to overcome if we, all people of all colors, are to live without racism? The program was planned to be a follow-up to our December 2019 workshop entitled Confronting White Nationalism Slash Advancing All People. We had actions to review and priorities to set. I was geared up. Another fresh memory has been roaming through me since the 2020 MLK Junior Unity March, organized and led by members of the fraternity Alpha Phi Alpha and the International Intercultural Affairs Office on the campus of Western Carolina University. After the march, I went inside to warm up and return the name tag I had worn in memory of a black male killed by law enforcement. As I handed it to one of the fraternity brothers, I wanted to say something to him, something in particular. The area where we stood was crowded and he had a job to do. And I am likely excusing myself for not being able to find the words and speak the thoughts I was having. All I could say was, thank you. Thank you for not giving up. Oh, not an option, he replied with a smile, which I returned and walked away. He assumed, I believe, that I was thanking him for not giving up on him, on not giving up on blacks in America, overcoming our country's racism. He knew that he would overcome, his brothers would overcome. Yes, they will. What I thanked him for though, was for not giving up on white people, on us, on me. I need to practice how to say what I mean if I am to overcome. Within a few days, I was giving thanks again. Dr. Orlean Anderson Graves Simmons was the keynote speaker for Western Carolina University's recent celebration of the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Afterward, I joined a crowd to shake her hand with gratitude. 
Then I wrote her a letter because I continued to overflow with her story and what it told me about mine. Now, I'll share some excerpts from my letter to her as a way to pass our stories on. And this is where I write to Dr. Simmons. As a student at Morris Hill College, class of 1977, and later as its director of alumni activities, you know, we called them affairs back then, alumni affairs <laughs> in the 1980s, I learned the college's history and heard it recounted at many a Founders Day. Here is what struck me. A founding father put up for auction his slave, Joe Anderson, to secure completion of the college's funding. When funding was completed in time through other means, Joe was not auctioned and instead returned to his owner. Every time I heard this story, questions filled my mind and heart. The founders of this school had slaves. The founders could arrive at no other way to finalize its funding than to sell a person. Auctioning one's slave demonstrated this founder's exceptional generosity and respect for education and the people of these rural mountains. What about Joe? What about acknowledging what Joe would have given if he had been auctioned? What about recognizing all that Joe was not allowed in this negotiation? What about remembering this land's violent history? And what about rededicating this college's future to education, peace, and freedom for all, each and every time this history is told? All of this rose up in me again as I listened to you, Dr. Simmons, and I began to connect my story with yours. Your story told me what I did not hear during my years at Orso College. Your story also pointed out my debt to you as a college student. Growing up from, with, uh, growing up from South Carolina roots exposed me to white prejudice and racism, a plenty. Yet I quietly developed peaceable convictions about unity and humanity. Nevertheless, I was too naive to make sure that I was choosing an integrated college. But I did, because of you. As Director of Alumni Affairs, I became more familiar with your name and legacy as the first black student to enroll at MHC. I also read about you in regional news venues. During these times, during these years as Alumni Director, I was deeply moved by a black woman who delivered a powerful talk at MHC for a major college-wide assembly. I wrote a note and slipped it to her. I thanked her for the talk and for the opportunity to look up and listen to a woman speak to us and moreover to a woman of color on that podium. I shared my hope for the day when it would be a common rather than rare experience. I don't recall if that woman was you, Dr. Simmons, though that would be wonderful serendipity between our stories. I admire and envy your clear, strong determination, and I'm grateful for the known and unknown ways it has and continues to matter in so many lives. Listening to you reminds me that all history, including our alma maters, requires revision. <laughs>